This striking exhibition presents three artists working in three different mediums with three distinctive voices. Combining abstraction and realism and two and three dimensional works, Three Voices is a shining example of the harmony that can be achieved through difference. The works of Carrie Dunn, Deborah Fine, and Gary Weissman possess a shared intensity, each drawing energy from the other, resulting in an exhibition abounding in emotion, beauty, power, and grace. Carrie Dunn depicts the figure in various states of dreaming and reality, presenting a peaceful, accepting world where love and touch are celebrated. This series started off with one painting, the young girl underneath this large white comforter and the light came in and it was just like, yes, like that's a painting. And I made that painting and I was like, this could be a whole series. And then I became interested in people's relationships, private moments, and I also wanted to paint a broad spectrum of people. I feel compelled to do that. These are real couples. Some of them are friends, some of them I met on Craigslist. Of course, we're all friends at this point, so they were kind enough to allow me into those spaces. Your teacher, Nelson Shanks, was pretty conservative. He painted the Pope. Sure. And here you are painting gay relationships in a very beautiful and loving way. What do you think he would have thought? I think he would have been very open to it. I know that Nelson was extremely opinionated and his politics were conservative, but I think he also had another side to him that was much more empathetic that showed itself at certain times. So, and I think that he would have been nothing but supportive for his students to go out and find their place in the world. There's a variety of ways you do it. Some of them are fairly loosely painted and some of them are very tightly rendered. So I'm still kind of experimenting and playing around. I can render and I can model and I can finish, but I love abstract expressionism. I'm a big Jackson Pollock fan to some of my colleagues' dismay. I just think that abstraction speaks so powerfully. So it's like you want to play with both. The texture and depth of Deborah Fine's paintings transcend reality and create a compelling force that pushes and pulls the viewer in an ever-changing experience. Just about 15 years ago, I signed up for this pastel class, and as it turns out, it was an abstract class and I had no clue how to do abstraction. I knew what it was, but I didn't know how to do it. And I just fell in love with it. So much freedom compared to what I was doing with the realism. It seemed much more difficult to me because there were no boundaries, but it was wonderful, and I've been doing abstract art ever since. It took me a long, long time to get to what I'm doing now. My new work is all acrylic paintings. I realized that I needed more tools, so I used my hands palette knives, paper towels. I would pour the paint on and I would slap the back of the canvas and move the paint where I wanted it to go, turn it and push it in another direction. And then I started using a lot of mediums, so I got a lot of texture. Coarse acrylic medium, it's like having sand in your paint. Pastel medium, which normally you would put on a piece of paper and then do your pastels, but I do it with acrylics. High gloss medium, I use a lot of airbrush medium. It gives you the consistency of water, but it doesn't do what water does to the pigment. I like it when people can get lost in my work, so I encourage the viewer to look around, and then when they get back to the beginning, they need to look around again because there's so much more detail that they need to see it more than once. That's what I try to do with all the textures and the layers and the lines. You're not carefully planning each effect. You're doing things and judging whether it's good or not, right? Yeah. Bruce Samuelson said that everything he does is an accident, and he chooses which accidents to leave there. I think that's pretty much what I do. Gary Weissman's mythical creations exist between imagination and reality, each piece possessing a timeless existence 
with a contemporary message. I switched into sculpture full-time when I was 13. I was going to the school at the Art Institute. The class for my age was closed, so they stuck me in an older person's class. Aside from them talking dirty, they had such tenacity, they were just hugging what they were doing as opposed to me just pushing around. So my expectations completely shifted. Originally, this stuff comes from organizing form and space. I think the shift has been significantly raised towards the narrative. I started watching hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos on dance and lots and lots of screenshots. And you could pause it, make it go slow. I watch it in super slow motion because then I thought I'm actually hiring models that know what they're doing as opposed to you bringing one in and she says, well, how do I stand? The narrative is so fused with what they're doing. It's very rare when you just get abstract dancing that doesn't have a meaning. Do you work from video still sometimes? No. You can't get models to hold a position like that, can you? Yes. I have rigging in my studio, and I have a gantry crane which moves. I have a table that goes from horizontal all the way up to vertical, and it's on a floating hinge. So I can change the angle of the table, prop her up with pillows on top of blocks, or in some cases, ropes. So you can get them to do stuff. But this model I've been working with for 10 years, and so the choreography between me and her is pretty decent, and she can improve my poses, and she's very fluid. You know how some people are triple-jointed, and she's like liquid. Do you always work for models? I have been for the last 10 years. Prior to that, it was all invention. I asked artist and gallery director Catherine Stanek about why it was important to her to mount an exhibition out of this aesthetically diverse trio. As an artist, I go into my studio, I'm in my own head, I'm doing my own thing. Then my artwork goes out into the world, along with other artwork and other artists, and galleries do what they need to do to sell it, promote it, etc. I have no control of that, and I have even less control of when somebody buys it, where it goes, what collection it goes into, and how it's presented in their homes. As a gallerist, what we aspire to do is put together exhibitions that become a work of art themselves. The walls and floors are our canvas. This exhibition we're particularly proud of because we didn't concern ourselves with abstract representational figure, sculpture, painting, mixed media. We didn't concern ourselves with that. We were just looking for the essence of the artwork and how it harmonized with the works there to create a beautiful presentation. How did you decide that these three artists were particularly in tune with one another? Just the visual reaction. We saw the works in the studio and say, oh, this reminds me of the feeling I had when I saw that. Not that it, one artist reminds me of another artist, but it, it evokes a similar a response, or even more importantly, it evokes a response that leads me to the next. My question to the artist is, how do they feel about that? Going into a collection that if they're an abstract artist, putting it in a representational collection. And why is it that we have to separate the two? Care to respond, Debbie Fine, abstract painter extraordinaire. I like being with these other artists. It's obvious when you look at the artwork that everybody has an enormous amount of commitment. All three of us seem to be focused on the craftsmanship and the materials that we used. The integrity shows, but the artwork is very different. Every single end of the spectrum that you could probably have. And I think that there's a lot of power in drama, but everybody sees that drama with a different perspective. They see it in different ways. I think that it's nice to be in a show where there's lots of different voices. What's it like to see one of Gary's sculptures in front of your paintings? There happens to be one of my paintings next to one of his sculptures that I think really speak to one another. The bronze works beautifully with the colors that I've been using, so I think they speak to each other. What does it feel like to be exhibiting with these two other artists? And I'm super excited. I'm really happy to be at Stanek because I think that their shows are at a national level, in my opinion. Gary's work, hopefully meet him tonight sometime. I've been impressed with his work for many, many years. So to be showing with him is a step up for me. 
He has these figures that are showing a lot of emotion and it has these words attached to it, which adds another layer. Forgiveness, another one was kindness. I'm going to go out on a limb a little bit and say that we're probably responding to some similar things that we're seeing happening in the world today and just being sensitive, creative people. You can't help but want to bring out more empathetic themes. So maybe there's some correlation with that. Deborah's works are beautiful. There's a real delicacy to her abstract paintings. I love looking at different textures and colors because I like to try and employ that into my own work even though I'm more representational, but I think that's such a part of the language. You just want to maximize that for, to the greatest effect. So, so I would even be curious to take some classes with her if that was ever a, a possibility. Do you like having your work seen in a show with people who are very different from you? don't know that anyone's work is different than mine. I tend to see things reductively in that it's not object-based. It's really what is the experience that it's transmitting that was a relation between the artist and the piece and now becomes the piece and the viewer. So in that sense, the commonality is there. So I'm just looking for that in anything, even if I go to the Louvre, right? Well, in one room, it's your pieces with Carrie Dons. In the other room, it's your pieces with Deborah Fine. Well, let me say this about that. I don't believe in identity in the sense that you're describing it. Identity isn't a fixed, objectified format. I'll just go on the limb here and say that all identity is shared, and so that a shared relation is the identity, like you and I are now like two notes in a chord. The identity that's shared is musical. When we hear the chord, we don't look for the notes. And also, there's similarity, but contrast. I don't want to call it contrast. I want to call it compliment. You can say blue and orange is a contrast, but when put together sensitively, it harmonizes. That's why you're the gallerist and I'm the lowly videographer. So when you see experientially, the edges of things don't exist anymore because that isn't the format for that language anymore. I agree fully with Catherine's thesis. What matters in art is not the style or the medium. What matters is whether it can make you feel something. And that is certainly the case with the work of Carrie Dunn Deborah Fine Gary Weissman.